we get a sailboat Chasing down the sunset as we float Round and round the globe This is Margarita, the normal one in a not quite normal marriage. And this is Peter, he's a little bit different, which keeps me on my toes. Together we are on an adventure that didn't work out as planned, but we are fighting back, so come join us! Well, check out that list. It's gotten bigger and the time has gotten shorter. Look, I think it's pretty obvious that we're not going to get it finished on time. Sorry about that. That's just the way it happens. I really don't know how it happened. Well, I do, but I'm not allowed to mention any names. Now, um, our budget already stretched uh, in the usual times is now approaching critical implosion. And um, I went and saw the marina owners and uh, they agreed to help us out because they're top blokes, and um, I agreed to do a bit about their marina. Now, in actual fact, I was already going to do a bit about their marina anyway. If I wasn't so close-minded when I was in Guatemala, I would have spent a quarter of the time there, and I would have hightailed it down to Colombia. Look, some people would argue that Guatemala is actually cheaper, maybe with the labour rates, but with the benefit of Cartagena being a city, you've got the city industry and you can get anything done and everything is available there whereas Guatemala is you really need to bring in a lot of your own stuff uh, it's getting a bit better but certainly we would have had a better time in Colombia certainly Margarita more things for her to do and we would have had uh, in the long run it would have been cheaper for us so this bit is really information for boat owners who are in the Caribbean or future boat owners. A lot of people buy their second-hand boats in the Caribbean. If you do not have Manzanilla Marina Club uh, close to the top of your list, you are crazy. So without further ado, I shall now introduce you to Maurice. We are a cruiser-friendly marina. Uh, we have a... Uh... We are a family-owned business, okay, we all run it. My father built it in 1989 and till today, now I run it. So as you can see, we do all type of work. One of the works and most common is osmosis, osmosis jobs. Uh, for example, this boat has a severe osmosis problem. So we're filling it with letting it to dry. At least four months, it's gonna, it's gonna stay here. And then we will repair with epoxy resin and fiberglass. Now this travel lift looks small, but it packs a big punch. It has two bars at the top. One of them is hydraulic, so it can fit any type of any type of boat. I was I was amazed because when I first saw the travel lift, uh, I thought shivers. How is it going to fit us? And this is movable arm is unbelievable. So it actually, your boat nestles in, the, the arm comes up and then it goes behind the stay. So basically you can fit a really, really big boat in such a small travel lift. Yeah. And it's also extendable, it actually grows. This here comes all the way, like up to here. It extends. Okay, these are our new docks that we we just finished them in no time i'll have the towers with electricity water 220 and 1 110 volts have you had any really big storms here what i've noticed is just out yeah. front of here there's this this island so, i imagine it doesn't matter what storm you get here you just completely nestle uh, that's an important point because in my belief i think this is the most secure place in cartagena for storms and waves and all of that because we are enclosed, it's inside a channel that we are facing north where winds normally come and the other side is the is the south where the big storms come from. So the culo de pollo. The culo de pollo, yeah. <laughs> as the, the chicken ass. The, the chicken, chicken ass. ass storm, yeah. yeah. They're fast, they're strong but they don't last long. The way we design it this time are looking through the wind, you know. We, we, we won't have sideways, yeah. you know, uh, a force on the boats. We're gonna have it 
uh, looking through the wind or looking to, to the wind on this side, yeah. Any size, yeah, whatever. The channel is a three meter channel deep. The area here is very comfortable for cruisers because just outside the marina, like 10 minutes uh, walking, you can find most of the all the places to do work on your boat. You can find stainless steel, upholstery, woodwork, you can find filter shops, uh, parts, all type of parts. So and that's it's very convenient. Literally all the shops, the industrial shops are there. Yeah. And the taxis are between two and three US dollars to get wherever you like. So yeah. it's easy here. We do all kinds of, of boat work, we do canvas work, we even have a person who can uh, repair yourselves. We got carpenter, we got fiberglass work, we're really good at that one, I like it. The, the paint work, uh, anti-fouling work, and if we don't have it, I can help you find uh, the correct person for you. Here's the guy who made it all possible, Mauricio, he's the owner. So we try to you to go from here, please, with satisfaction. No, no. Nothing but quality. Nothing but quality. <laughs> oh yeah, now, if you asked me two years previously, I would have been a bit scared to go to Colombia, but that's just me being narrow-minded. I never ever felt unsafe in Cartagena at all, and because Margarita wanted to see so many things, we went everywhere and we came back at night. Just a bit of caution, that's all you really need. And in any case, the marina is under 24 hour security guard, armed guard, and there are guard dogs. So, you got really no problems here. And one last piece of advice about Cartagena, the barnacle issue in the harbour is a real problem. So what you need to do is you need to time your splashing and your going so it's pretty well at the same time. And that's what we intended to do. So get your bottom done, splash and leave immediately. Because we were getting close to uh, finishing all the jobs, well, close in the broadest possible sense of the term, uh, I was looking at the long range 10 day forecast uh, to get out of Cartagena. Now, uh, you might remember from a previous episode, the winds uh, between Cartagena and St. Marta can be really strong. Quite often they're gale force and at night gusting into the 40s and sometimes the 50s. Now, I didn't want to go through that and I didn't want Margarita to go through that either. So I was looking at the forecast and I noticed that six days away there was a break in the weather and the, the strong winds were dropping to about 10 to 15 knots and it was going to be there around for about a day and a half, possibly two days. And this was the time that we needed to aim for because afterwards the winds were coming back full force for another week or so. So, five days, five full days of work and on the sixth we need to go. And this is still what needs to be done. There will be no sleep for us this week. Water was leaking down through the winch bolt holes, so I ripped them up to investigate. Gee, a whole heap of water came out of there. So when he siliconed it completely up, all the water that comes through on here stays here. So eventually it rots around the bolt and then drips into the cabin. I'm going to put some grooves here so all of the water can go, just like I've done on this one. Again, this is completely sealed around the base, so any water going in is trapped. I don't understand people's obsession to uh, silicon. I mean, around the bolt holes, yes, but not around everything. Just let the water flow through. So I ended up drilling a hole completely right through the top, through the teak. I didn't want to, I wanted to keep the hole original here and drill up from below, but I can't get access to it. So I'm just going to get rid of all the 
the um, rotten wood, I'm going to put an Allen key in the drill and chew it all out. I can smell it's moist. I think I got most of it. I'll just let it dry out and then I'm just going to fill it full of an epoxy Q cell and cellulose fiber mix. And then I'll re drill the hole and hopefully that'll seal it all up. And of course, I'm going to put grooves here and not seal this, only seal each individual bolt. So, water, when it gets in the, the, um, the winch handle, it'll um, just run out. Okay, just taping some peel ply to act as a base. Don't worry, the resin doesn't stick to this. Now, I'm using really slow hardener resin uh, it's one to one um, I don't want it to get really hot and start to boil and it'll just wreck the integrity of the seal and the plug so I'm going to use some mill fibers that'll give it some strength and I'll bulk it up with um, Q-cell which is um, glass microspheres um, it's going to be a really wet mix so uh, I want it to go through all the loop because I've gouged out the, um, the, the, the wooden core and I want it to go to all little places. If it's too thick, um, it won't go everywhere. I'm only going to use a little bit of this, uh, the mill fibres, because that really, uh, you don't want to put too much in because then it won't flow at all. So it's basically just to have like a, God, it's really hot in here. I'm sweating like a pig. Um, basically, it's just um, like a cross latticed tiny little fibers that'll just give some strength it's a bit like fiberglass that'll just be all unidirectional i'm only adding that much now i haven't put the hardener in yet i'm just going to make quite a dry mix because it's one to one this will soup it up afterwards That's what you call it, accurate measuring. Now I'll come back to this one, I'm just going to fill up the other ones. You can see the levels dropped a bit, but I'm just going to jam it in all around underneath. Try and get everything wet and then I'll pour a top on it. Where I could I used a hole saw from below to get rid of the rot. In all there were about eight holes that needed attention. Now to level it out with this, because this is sloping, it was all starting to ooze off, so you just get a bit of peel ply and um, let it touch it to it and then massage it and that'll reduce all your sanding. I stuffed up a bit here because it was so hot and I had other jobs to do the mix traveled downhill under the peel ply without me noticing it so I'll have to sand it a bit. What I should have done is put a few layers of painters tape over the top and this would have prevented the creeping. If you do it right with peel ply there's very little or no sanding at all which is the advantage of using it. So all we need to do now is drill it and then seal it with butyl tape when putting the winches back on. Easy peasy. Two coats of epoxy primer and two coats of urethane and we are done. There are three things you need when doing a glass job. Preparation, materials and preparation. It all has to be arranged, there is no delay. We are using polyester resin and with the Colombian heat we will have barely 5 to 10 minutes working time. So we'll have to do two pots of resin, otherwise we won't have enough time. This is the peel ply to make it easier and give a good finish at the end.
Everything has to be cut and ready and have its place ready to drop in as soon as possible. Resin must be already measured with the next pot ready with the catalyst already in a paper cup ready to drop in. The guy that owned the boat before us stuffed up and the glass was cracking over the poor quality foam he used and the little step he put in here. This is where we shower and it is a pet hate of margaritas to have a dirty floor, especially cracked and mouldy. So I've removed all the paint and filler and we will fix this baby with lots of glass so there will be no more cracking and leave just a smooth, easy to clean floor and make margarita happy. Notice I've put in a radius in the corners so the glass won't have to bend too radically and suck in air which it always does with heavy glass. What's really important is a dry run so Margarita knows exactly what to do. Basically I need her to have clean hands free from resin so she can handle the glass she's following and to help when necessary. Notice I've put a lot of resin on the base because it's easier to force the resin up through the thick glass than to push resin down into it, especially multiple layers of thick glass. The first layer is on and again I'm putting a lot of resin down as I explained before. But also, in this heat, I'd rather have it cooler over a larger area and try to force it up through another layer of glass than have it boiling away in a pot, which will reduce its working time. This may be overkill here with so many layers of heavy glass, but you never know with my gorilla weight pouncing down onto this in a heaving sea. I only want to do this job once. Before I drop the peel ply, I want a bit more resin to fill the grooves between the glass weave and the peel ply. That way I won't have to fill the grooves after with filler. Okay, the job turned out pretty good. It's certainly structurally stable, but I could have improved upon two things to make my life easier. Number one, if you notice the peel ply at the start, it's very wrinkled. Believe it or not, those wrinkles will impart to the glass and the resin, so it'll leave tiny little channels, and I'll have to sand and fill it and sand again to get rid of them. Why do I need to do that when I could have just used really nice peel ply and I wouldn't have had those hassles? So when you do buy a peel ply, put in a roller and roll it up. Don't fold it, don't crinkle it like mine, do a good job. Number two is we had a pin and I was going to show that as a grand finale. I was going to go, oh look, we've got bubbles. Oh no, we've got problems between the peel ply and the glass. And then I was going to show you this magical, mystical, wonderful invention called the pin. So when you see those bubbles between the peel ply and the glass, you get a pin and you make a hole and you simply squeeze the bubble out. And then you have no imperfections at all. So a good peel ply job, there'll be no sanding or so little it's not funny. The trouble was the Colombian heat. I had so little time it wasn't funny, so I couldn't use the pin at all. It had already set. Bugger. And now I have to fill and sand and waste four hours, but at least it is done and Margarita will be happy. Meet Princess Melaconutius the third. She is one exhausted dog. I'm licking my sweat. Well, the thought across my mind once or twice. Oh no, Margarita's found some puppies. That means no more cuddles for Plucky. It's a tree. 
she's quite a young mommy. She just has two years old. So she goes and wanders and has fun. And they, they stay all day crying. Oh, you're so little. You're so little. No, it's not. He's a boy. Jesus, how did I confuse? It has a thing. There's a girl, I saw a girl. No? She's a boy? This is what uh, Margarita did to me when she first met me. Turn me over, just to make sure. To make sure you were a man? Or, a trend, or not a transsexual? It's a bit harsh. The switch that raises the anchor is not working well, so I suspect dirty contacts. So let's take a look. We can clearly see the two spots where the contacts were causing the intermittent working of the switch. So let's clean them up. Now, I could just turn it over or just rotate a little bit and put the contacts on another spot. But I'll clean it up as best as I can just in case it rotates. And I'll turn it over anyway. This one, I may as well check as well, because if this one was corroding on the contacts, this is probably corroding too, and it's going to be on the way out, so I might as well do it all. Each of these batteries weighs more than Margarita and she wanted to help me lift them out. Now, don't get me wrong, Margarita would be able to lift them out, but she hurt her back doing the sanding the other day. I hurt my back, so good on uh, Roberta for giving us a hand. Um, now we have no power and we have no primary rinse, so I'm just going to use my weight just to lift it up and drop them down. You ready, muscles? Well, you're the one who's going to go down with the batteries. No, no, no. Well, I'm just going to guide it. <laughs> Yeah, good help, good stuff. We just got to get our, we're getting T120s, they didn't have T105s. It's a big difference uh, to these 305s, but we got given these 305s second hand by Dwayne. Thank you Dwayne, you know who you are, you've probably seen him on the episodes helping us out. And he enjoy, uh, joined us in Belize, so good on you Wayne. Uh, Dwayne, they've uh, served their purpose, uh, but now they're completely rooted. <laughs> oh, it's such a mess, but we're getting there. But good on Roberto for helping me with those batteries. That's one thing you notice about um, Colombians. They're excellent workers. They're really good workers. They're super helpful. He's been helping us here and there all over the place. He doesn't want payment. But uh, Margarita shoved enough to buy him a case of beer. So you've got to do it. He's a lovely guy. So And they're all good like that. I'm not going to make any comparisons with any other countries we've been to. But the Colombians are the hardest working, honest, and just really nice. So... The new babies have arrived! No margaritas Chinese steel toe work boots. I might as well milk it for all it's worth people. Because my bloody solid in Shanghai has left me for Atticus. <laughs> Okay, that's the chafe with the, um, the jib halyard. 
So I stuffed up with the masthead. Um, the only thing I can think of, uh, I know I dremeled it all around. When the guy drilled it, it was a little bit off center. So maybe that's the thing. But the culprit, I um, mean, whatever, whoever's to blame, doesn't matter. Still got a problem. So I'm going to splice some wire into this rope so it won't chafe. Now when you do that, it uh, expands the rope a little bit. So I've simulated that with a bit of tape. I'm just going to see if it actually can go in. Because uh, if it doesn't go in, well, there's no point splicing wire. So let's see how it goes. When I say it goes in, I mean that when we raise the jib, the splice will need to run through the sheave up top and then down through a hole in the masthead. This is what I am testing now. It looks all right. So I reckon we should go ahead and splice it. This is all you need. Sharp knife, well, debatable on my boat. One of the feds, wire cutters, electrical tape. It's better to use uh, splicing tape, but I don't have any. One of these sharp babies. And we recommend you have a, um, a hot knife, but I've just got a blowtorch, so that'll do. Obviously, the other end of the wire has a thimble on it. But this end, grab the last 20 inches and divide it up into six equal segments and mark it. Unravel one of the strands all the way up to the first mark and cut it. And then unravel another strand all the way up to the second mark and cut it. And so forth and so forth until you've got it tapered. Use splicing tape to tape up the wire. I don't have any, so electrical just have to do. Pull out about four feet of core from the rope and make an overhang of about eight inches from the end and then mark where the tape ends, i.e. at the 20 inches mark. Tape a fit to the tapered end of the wire and feed it through the core all the way up to the 20 inches mark. Here's a picture to show what it should look like. Unravel the last 8 inches of the core and put some tape at the 8 inch mark so you don't go too far. Divide into 3 equal bundles. Pick up 2 strands of the wire with the pointy fit and feed one of the bundles through. Pull this tight. Get the pointy feed and go through the next two wires and push another bundle in and pull it tight. They say to do it at least three times for each of the bundles, so nine all together. But I did about five or six for each. Now use your specialist hot knife and cut the overhanging bits close to the wire and then melt the ends and taper smoothly. And now milk the outer sheath back over the core. Use gloves, it can be a little tricky over the melted ends of the inner core. My advice would be to make those ends as smooth as possible. Try and get the outer sheath about 8 inches over the melted core section. Now unpick the outer sheath for about 8 inches. Okay, welcome to the second part of the splicing. Sorry I ran out of time, mainly because I was interrupted, mainly by myself. So I've just got to simply do the same thing. I've got three bundles here and I've got to intertwine it up here at least three times each into the wire. So let's get into it. So what are you doing, Precious? I'm putting the, our warm clothes away in the vacuum bank. Is that the warm clothes that we're never ever going to use? We're having arguments over how much, how many clothes we got. I reckon you need three pairs of shorts, three shirts, one jumper, and one pair of trackies. Margarita believes in that, but times 10, and everyone different color. So then times is under 20. So as before, use the pointy fit to pick up two strands of wire and push one of the bundles through. 
and for the next bundle for the next two strands and so on and so on. Margarita has completely cleaned the entire boat, walked it all the way up to the apartment up there and brought it back. She's amazing. They say to do it at least three times for each bundle. I think I did it four times. Cut and remove the overhangs and then smooth it over with a hot knife. What's happening? I'm digging the air. To properly do that, you need to put on another 100 pounds. Yeah. Maybe 200. What am I saying? I'll do that. It's been working. Now we've got to test if it fits through the sheave up top. Here's hoping. Bloody beauty, it worked. Well, that's a load off my mind. It was a little bit thicker than what I thought. What are you doing? Trying not to kill myself. I need you to go under there and pull the wires. Okay. Okay, I'm pulling. It's stuck. Okay. All done. Well, almost. We were running out of time, so we taped and did the sand coat on the same day, but in the late afternoon. Just finished taping, so we put the sand, so it's our anti-slippery. Uh, we just did the round corner, so the water flows, and it's nicely and easy to clean. We're running out of time. This has got to be done now. I've got a tarp up, so hopefully that will keep the dew off. But it's only a sand coat, so it doesn't matter if it goes um, a matte, because that's usually what happens. The dew makes the shiny paint go matte finish. Um, there you go, that saves you on buying the, <laughs> buying the uh, additive that makes uh, shiny paint go matte finish. But uh, it's just got to be done. Um, there's so many jobs still to go and... Uh... This sand comes from San Blas, comes from Crocodile Island, so maybe there's bits of crocodile poo in it. Better do a close up twice on that I reckon, just like my other episode, because you may not see it again. Now I'll just wait that uh, I wait for the paint to go a bit stickier so the sand actually sticks. Otherwise, if you go too quickly with the roller with new paint, it just lifts up all the sand and then it puts it in clumps. So I'll leave that for a bit. I'm just in dinner. Bugger. I just realized I didn't paint the nose cone of the new wind generator. Uh, Margarita, uh, I'll be back in a sec before the paint dries. Our cockpit paint job used up the last roller and paintbrush, so I needed to get back to the ones I just used before they dried. I have to try and brave the NASA. That's a big dog that's called NASA. So I've got to try and find out 
if he's gonna kill me or not. Usually he's down there. He's friggin' huge and mean. And I feed him every day. I mean, only, only gringo looks like this. You'd think he'd realize it by now. I gotta shut up. All right, let's do the bolt. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's a little dog. But still, that little one's mean too. I'll get lights. You'll see something. You'll see some action. You know, my blog, it's nothing but, well, nothing but quality. All right, I've got to paint that nose cone. There we go. Thank you to Cliff. Cliff uh, found a um, wind generator on the internet for cheap and uh, painted it and fixed it up and whatever he did and bought some switches and stuff and all the complete gear and sent it down to us. Uh, so good on you, Cliff. Thanks very much. Um, I'm going to paint the nose coat. Otherwise, it's an ugly grey. Well, maybe we won't stand for it. Oh no, the paint's going off. <laughs> There's so little left. Like it's a little cone. Okay, now let's make a run for it. All right, that's the first time I haven't been harassed. Bloody good. Done and done, my beautiful lovely. And I didn't even get eaten by the dog. Look at the cheap shit they're giving us. A year and a half. Yeah. Now, I don't have the tools or the patience to pull this apart, so I've put some oil in it. I'm going to run a drill on it, and I'm just going to run it as fast as I can for a long time and keep on dropping oil down there and heating this up a little bit. Hopefully, it'll all get in the bearings. It's never going to be perfect. It's always going to be reading, I don't know, five to ten knots less. But at least I've got some indication and we've got to go. So I've just put the whirly gig uh, into the drill. It's not a very quick drill, this one. We've got no power. So I'm going to simply hold that and run it and drop some oil into it. And hopefully the oil will run into it and grind up all the rust and corrosion that's obviously in here from their shoddy work. And at least it might spin like before when I brought it down it just didn't spin or it's it it spun in about 30 knots and it told me it was anywhere between 8 and 15 knots I'm assuming this is in an induction thing so there's a little magnet here and as it spins around it's picked up by another coil on the circuit board and it just counts the number of this this uh, the times that this little magnet spins and you know equates it to an equation and gives you the velocity I certainly hope that is the case because I'm just going to epoxy this on at the rough position. I, I can't know exactly the position with this magnet uh, this magnet had to the circuit board because all the plastic crumbled away. That's how crap this shit is. Did I mention how B&G stuff is really I might have mentioned it once or twice. But it's... <laughs> Did I mention it? Well, that's enough of that nonsense. Sorry to be so emotional, but we have another piece of B&G equipment on board the boat, and it's under three years old, and yes, it's not working as well. They're going to get no more business from me. So, we have two days to go, and it was a blur. Now... We didn't actually paint the bottom. The guys at the yard sealed it and painted it because we were running out of time and it looked at what they did a good deal for us anyway. I had to go shopping with Margarita. We had to restock the boat. We had to get all the gear from the, that apartment back into the boat. It was a nightmare. I think in the last three days or three nights, we probably slept less than 10 hours. So not a, not a good uh, start to uh, a five day sailing trip, but look, there you have it. Now the weather window is still open. So Friday is the day we must leave. And as you can see, we're splashing Thursday afternoon. So we're all good. So join us next week and we'll sail to the Caymans.
if you like watching us, you can also follow us on our Instagram account and Facebook is exactly the same name, Sailing Into Freedom. And give us a like, subscribe if you haven't, and click the bell so you don't miss on any future video that's coming up. And don't forget to name drop people. We need all the help we can get to 